Lara, and welcome. I'm Peggy, and welcome to our kitchen. And oh boy, are you ready for some good, wholesome food that is reasonable and doesn't take all day to fix, and it's good for you? Well, we've got the answers, and one of my favorite people, mm -hmm. Rhonda Matthews. I'm so glad to have you here. I love coming to visit with you. So and you we look always great with your Clemson colors on. Yeah, everybody's waving the Clemson you flag bet. right now. And so. she, of course, is from the Clemson University. We're delighted Correct. to have you. Thank and you. And today, well, tasty meals for the family. And what are you going to do today? So what? we've got a basic meal. We're just going to not, and I don't hesitate to even use the word fancy it up, but we're going to bring as much flavor from it as humanly possible with very simple, straightforward preparation. Well, you've got hassle back potatoes. What is a hassle back Great question. Potatoes? And we're actually going to start with that dish. Um, a lot of times you'll see hassle back potatoes around the holidays. It's simply a method of preparation derived from a uh, Swedish word, if I'm not mistaken, and it's simply a very thin slice. So we'll get started with that recipe, then we'll add some Brussels sprouts to okay. it, then we'll finish it off with our entree and put everything together. So let's get started. We're going to start out with simply a, and I have pre-washed well, these, these potatoes. But not peeled. That's correct. So we're going to take the peeling off these. I thought maybe you were going to leave the peeling on. Well, you can certainly do it that way if you find a nice thin-skinned potato. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And, of course, you're going to increase your fiber uh, content in the final dish. So, um, But we'll just quickly take the peel off these. So we have Irish potatoes or russets, whichever uh, you happen to find on sale in the grocery store that week. Okay. Both will work very well in this uh, in this recipe and we're going to do a couple of those and then we're going to also do a couple of sweet potatoes to go okay. with it. Now here's the part that makes it Hasselback. One of the ways to do Hasselback is simply to take the entire potato and do very thin slices okay. that way. Today we're going to do it more of a I guess you would say almost a casserole type preparation and we're going to slice very thinly until it's thinner than a French fry, but oh, slightly thicker than. You're an artist. A, yeah, you well, do that. not so sure about that, but it's a little thicker than you would think but of you a need potato a really chip. Sharp well, <laughs> I could not have said uh, that was actually my uh, next sentence. Yeah. So I, you, you're reading my mind. You do need a sharp knife because the quickest way to cut yourself is with a dull knife, and that seems counterintuitive, but it's not. You're you have to work a lot harder with a dull knife. So those so are sort of delicate slices. That's correct. Say. So we're going to move through the rest of this potato. There we go. Very thin. And then, there we go. The next one is? Oh, the sweet potato. We'll do a sweet potato as well. And we'll take the skin off him. So you're going to mix the... Irish Correct. potato and the sweet potato. Correct, and we will fan them out in a, uh, a baking pan or a baking dish, and it's a beautiful presentation, but we're not necessarily doing anything difficult with them. This is simply, there we go, and we'll take, you have to work a little slower with the uh, sweet potatoes. Yeah. They're a little firmer, so get a good grip on them and make sure they're secure, but you still want those nice thin chips coming through. There we go. And I think you can begin to see what we're going for here. Just several, several thin slices of potatoes. Now you can see the it's going to be beautiful with the orange and the white, but the, we have all kinds of different type, different types of potatoes available to us now just in the local supermarket. So a little purple said, in oh, here. Got both. Oh yeah, a little purple in here, and you would really have something great looking. It looks great now. So what we're gonna do is we'll use just a little bit of salt. And not, I know not too much. I knew you'd get on to me for that. I yeah. know that you're not a fan of, of so much salt, but I, I'll be the first to say when you do potatoes, they they really do like a generous hand with the salt if you want to get the maximum flavor from them. Then we're going to add a little bit of butter. Now, if your family is not the fan of butter, certainly 
uh, use olive oil instead. You'll still get beautiful results and we're simply going to toss this to coat and make sure that everything well, is... olive oil is good for you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Both are wonderfully natural choices. It just simply depends on what your family prefers. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hang tight. I'll get it arranged in just a gist. So you can see what I'm starting to do here. We're simply going to stand these up vertically on, on their end. And now in the interest of time, we're not going to spend 15 minutes uh, peeling and stacking potatoes. But, but this is what we're going for. Around. That's right. right. So we would have, if you do the two sweet and two baking potatoes, you'll have enough to fill this entire pan. Give it just a little topping of salt. And then once we've got our pan full, what we'll do, and I mean, talk about minimal amount of, you know, ingredients here. This is potatoes, butter, and salt. So that's just not a whole lot of uh, ingredients. We'll cover these. Now, if our pan would be full, we'll cover this nice and tight. And then we'll slide it into a preheated oven. 350, 375 would do nicely. Let it go for about 30 minutes. That will be long enough for the potatoes to be tender. Okay. But at the point where they're tender, then remove the aluminum foil, put them back, and uh, let them go about 15 to 20 minutes more. And the tops will brown up nicely, mm. very nicely. And you get this, your end result is a fantastically... Um, just tender, crispy, everything about it is, is uh, a friend to the taste buds. So okay. um, what we'll do is we'll slide this into the oven. We'll let it go, and I've got one fixed ahead so, so that when we get it. ready, okay. we'll, we'll take a All peek right. at it. Um, and if you don't mind, I'm going to hand that one to you All and right. let you take it. You want me to put this in the I oven? I do. If you'll go ahead and put that in the All oven, right. and we'll just, at the end, we'll pull everything out and take a look. All right. There we go. All right. So now if I was at home, and of course, you know, your viewers are going to be cooking this at home, that would be the first dish I would prepare. So that's why we did it first okay. today. That's going to take about 30 to 45 minutes to get to a finished product. So start that one first, get it in the oven, and while it's cooking, get on with the rest of the meal. Okay. So uh, we'll use our time wisely that way. Oh, she's got my favorite. Yeah, lots of folks are a big fan of Brussels sprouts. I start out, when I talk with folks about Brussels sprouts, I always say the same thing first. If you are dumping these into a pot of boiling water and letting it boil for 20 minutes, you're doing a tremendous disservice to a very delicious vegetable. Yeah, you don't want them mushy. No, uh, you don't. You do want them tender, but there's, we're going we're gonna to coax every ounce of flavor out of these that we can possibly get today. I bought these in and these are very common today, um, microwavable plastic yeah. bag. You can just pop it straight in the microwave. So that's what these started out as. But as you can see, they've got, you know, they've been taken off the stalk a few days, so they've browned a little bit. So well, I opened it up. That's right. Okay. All I'm going to do is trim it away so that we've got a nice clean end there. And we're going to get a prettier product, so to speak. And then once we have trimmed away that end. There we go. Let me see if I can find a better knife. We're simply going to take them and, and cut them in half. Now we've got those, my child calls them tiny cabbages. Okay. That's what they are. So, um, and these are, I saw these growing, not growing. They were being sold still on the stalk in the grocery oh store. Or just a, a brand, a big chain store. It wasn't, you know, a small or niche market store. So well, these are very nutritious. Oh, so right. very good, yes. And the beauty of it is these cruciferous vegetables are readily available in the wintertime. You know, our summer gardens are good to us while they're in season, but then they're gone. And if you're not a big fan of canning or freezing, then you just kind of have to wait for summertime to come around again. But these are a wintertime vegetable, and they'll, they'll be available all winter long. So we're just going to trim and cut. Remember, we're going to keep that stem intact on the bottom. That holds everything together. So there we go. That's about right. Now, 
when these little outer leaves mm -hmm. fall off, don't, I, those you are the best part. Mm -mm. Those, I make sure those get in the pan. When these cook up, we're going to roast these. When these cook up, those little, these mm -hmm. are going to get crispy like a potato chip. I mean, they are cr just the best part of roasted Brussels sprouts. So, and we're working with about a pound of sprouts here. So, and, and this, this is, is a good time of year to have Brussels sprouts. Absolutely. All, all the, all these and their cousins, the yeah, this broccoli. Is a winter, a winter it's winter. The broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Um, and they're packed with nutrition. All the greens, yes, cauliflower. All these are in season right now, and boy, are they ever uh, nutritious. So, all right, we've got a we've got about a pan full now, so okay. we can. Now let's see if we've got any goody left that we want to make sure to get in there. There we go. <laughs> She's my kind of gal. Yeah, she want to waste I did. I can't. Well, you're throwing money in the trash, and I'm not a big fan of that. So, um, okay. All right, so we're in there. We're good. Now this part, and when I teach cooking or any kind of food uh -huh. prep classes, uh -huh. if we do a food like this and we've got this left over before it goes in the garbage can, I always ask the folks. Do you have chickens? Do you have goats? Do you have ducks? And if they do, they grab them because they want to take those home. That's the best snack in the world to throw throw out on the yard for some yard chickens. Okay. Or if you've got a compost pile, in it goes. All right. But today, I'm today sad to say, don't have any chickens around. No here. chickens in the studio, <laughs> so those are going to go. <laughs> those will go in the trash today. So we're going to use a little olive oil on these. Just give it a good heavy drizzle, and then we'll give it. A generous little bit of salt, and again, very similar to that those Hasselback potatoes. We're going to toss it until See, everything is coated and the looking all right. All good cooks use their hands. You know, I washed my hands I before know, we got up here. You know, that's the way to do it. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, you can feel it and tell if uh, if it's what you're looking for. So this is about right. We've got a pan full. We do not cover these. We did cover our Hasselback potatoes. These are uncovered. We want, we want them to get brown, and they are. When these are done, they are not just tender. You get incredible amounts of browning on these outer leaves okay. and then the part that's touching the pan. And that, that's where- right now. They're beautiful. Yes. Uh, when that brown that comes up after they're cooked is that intense brownness is where your maximum flavor is. So. Don't be shy about letting them get really okay. brown. That's you're going to get a better product. So uncovered, 350, 375. These are going to take about 20 minutes, and then they're ready to come to the table. Roasted Brussels sprouts. They That's would right. go with anything. With I fish, eat these. Chicken, hamburger, you whatever. Bet. You bet. Um, I forgot that one. We're going to go ahead and trim him back. The um, you're right. Uh, anywhere you would serve. Broccoli, coleslaw, any yeah. kind of cabbage, these can substitute right mm -hmm. there. So let's go ahead and slide these in the oven. Right. And I'm your assistant here. You so. are my good assistant. You all right. There they go. Mm. Okay. So we're gonna let those cook for a short time. Now we've we've already got two of our now if we were at home and two of our dishes were already done and in the stove would be we'd be making great time that's okay. wonderful i know all right now speaking of time we've got to take a quick break that's fine so don't go away because my friend rhonda matthews has great recipes and here it is tasty meals for the family and this is recipe number one thousand think of that one thousand mm -hmm. so if you would like this free thanks to clemson university and to Rhonda Matthews, you can send a self-addressed stamped envelope. We appreciate that. Send it to the Peggy Denny Show, Post Office Box 1616, Greenville, South Carolina, 29602. And we'll have it on its way to you. And we need the number because we got lots of recipes. So it's number 1,000. That's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. <laughs> 